Hi, welcome to One Bit Fever Dreams. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to install a RGB to HDMI device to your compact Mac. So this is the third machine I've modded it this way and basically it takes your video signal inside and duplicates it to a modern HDMI link. So you can connect a modern LCD such as this or a capture card or what have you. So I have the device running on my table, but here's a second copy. It's based on a Raspberry Pi Zero or Pi 3 or what have you. And basically you just have to set it for TTL level wires to it. And then out comes the HDMI cable. So the first use case is really obvious. Um, these CRTs are not being replaced, so it might fail one day. So this is a great way to ensure that uh, you have at least a video out from your, your vintage Mac. So one obvious case would be to completely bypass a CRT if you wanted. You could install a LCD inside your case and mod the interior a bit to hold it in place. And the other use case which I'm, I'm doing in my channel is to just capture very sharp, very crisp video uh, in real time if I want and I can stream it to the masses on the internet. So whenever I stream with my Macintosh Plus or SE30, I'm probably the one of the few handful of people on the world on Twitch if I'm doing it on Twitch or on YouTube. So I think that's pretty cool. So I'm going to show you today how to install it. It's really easy. Uh, I'm going to give you options whether you want to pay a little more money and secure it or if you want to just go at it and um, hope for the best, which is what I decided on personally. Uh, you, you'll see, it's pretty easy. So let's dive headfirst into the bench. Alright, so with the board taken out, we can see the J12 connector right here. There are 14 pins, let me zoom in. And the way this works is might not be the same as you expect with an IC. Uh, the first pin is actually here and then pin 2, pin 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and pin 8 is not here. Pay attention, it's right there. It says so on the sill screen uh, on the PCB right there. So the pins you actually need to connect to and pay attention are here, ground, um, video out, H-Sync, and V-Sync. So there are adjacent pins 8, 9, 10, and, and 11. And now it may not be everyone's preference, but um, I'm using Dupont cables, which come with uh, these plastic sleeves surrounding the mail pins. And my technique involves shoving them into the J12 connector seen here. So in order to successfully do this, you have to remove the plastic sleeve because it will just not go in and make good contact. You can try, but uh, the metal doesn't go far enough, so you have to remove the sleeves. So let me do an example. Um, if you can see right there, there's a metal tab showing up and there's a plastic retaining tab right beside it. So you have, I take some needle nose pliers here and I lift the plastic tab right there and I can break it, doesn't matter, since I have to remove it. So it slides right off, exposing the mail pin. So I have to do this for all four wires. And I'm actually taking a color code that mimics exactly the cables I'll need on the actual wire of the J12 connector. As you can see, it's the first four wires, black, uh, white, purple, and gray respectively it's the ground it's the video out it's h sync and then v sync <laughs> Thank you. 
so the cables are in but I'm gonna check for some continuity and I don't feel they're as solid as they could be so I'm gonna improve on that but let's check the continuity first So they are all connecting. Let me improve uh, the shoving of the cables off camera first. All right. So they're a bit more snug. And I'm gonna tie them up with some tie wraps um, so I can relieve some of the stress of the wires here. So I don't want these ends to move around. It might be bad. There might be a bad connection. So if I just uh, get inspired from this tie wrap that was stock from the SE30, just got, gonna add another one so I can profit from this uh, lovely bundle of wires, of original wires. This looks good. Doesn't seem to affect the ends. So the main strategy is to extend these cables with the same color code out of the case, probably through the Kensington locking trap and eventually it'll be soldered to the back end of this male DA connector which I use as the uh, interconnector for, for this project. As you can see on my RGB H2 HDMI, this is the second one I had laying around, completed. Uh, it has a female connector for uh, the DA connection and it'll interface with this which will connect to it. So as you can see, I have, a, I have a few sets of DuPont cables, male to male, female to female, and these are the ones I need, female to male. All right, so we're trying to put back the logic board now. Alright, so now the tricky part, getting the case back in. But first I'm gonna test the machine to see if smoke comes out, of course. Alright, so I've got my wires spread out with no chance of contact here. Right, very safe, and then uh, there's a mirror here so we can watch the screen. So let me plug this in. Chiming.
Ooh, I heard a little drop of uh, intensity. Alright, I see a cursor, so it's uh, gonna boot. Alright, and so for some reason the internal R disk, which is supposed to be working, does not work right now. But that's a common occurrence, it's on its last uh, living days. So it's fine. I've got a blue SCSI anyway. So I'm gonna try to put the back case on and fish the cables through one of the many options here. So this is unused, I'm gonna go through here. I could also wiggle my way through the Kensington lock hole here, but I won't need to. Not right now. So I disconnected my usual connected RGB to HDMI, which I keep a very short cable here, so just so I can do exactly this kind of swapping for testing purposes. So I've got the exact same color code with my wires, and as you can see there's a small male end of DuPont cable going to the connector that goes to the RGB to HDMI. So this is removable if I want to, like so. And it's the same kind of connector that I'll duplicate for this second RGB to HDMI. But for now, let's test this one since I know it's working. It's tied up to my setup under my desk. It goes to OBS if I want to duplicate and capture the, the video in real time. So let's just connect it up and test it. So yeah, some activity on the RGB to HDMI is doing something, so let's check out on the capture. Alright, so some success. Uh, I see an unstable image, so I'm gonna have to try to tweak the settings. Hang on. The footage of me fiddling on the settings is sped up. So what happened is that I ended up figuring out that I swapped the cables for H-Sync and V-Sync. This is why I would never be able to get a very stable signal. So the moral of the story is to triple check everything before you connect your wires and don't expect the color codes like from a Mac Plus to be the exact same as the Mac SC30. So take nothing for granted. Now that the setup is working, I'm going to show you a few examples of games. I'm starting off with Flappy Mac, programmed by Gruz, who has a channel called Classic Mac Gaming. And notice how crisp the image quality is. The animation is very smooth, very nice, despite only having a 30 FPS modest capture device right now. I'm going to follow it up with Megaroids 2, for which you could buy the source code back in the day in C, and some people have done so and shared it. I'm going to link it down below in the description. One thing you'll notice is the lack of sound. I suspect it's trying to use the sound driver of the earlier system software rather than the sound manager of System 7, which I'm using now. Next up, we have a personal favorite of mine, Beyond Dark Castle, which plays very nice on the SC30 with System 7.
And lastly, I'm showing off the CD version of Argon Trail, which is mounted in a virtual disk image, thanks to the new features of the Blue SCSI devices, version 1 and version 2 alike. Welcome to the Oregon Trail. You're about to begin a great adventure, traveling the Oregon Trail across the rugged You need to decide when to set off on the trail. So let me skip the gameplay right to the hardships of continental travel, and you can guess what will happen when I ford this river. Here's my Macintosh Plus. I've opened it so I can show you exactly where the wires go for the RGB to HDMI. So it's this cable that goes from the logic board to the analog board right there underneath all of these cables. I won't reach out for obvious reasons. I don't want to get shocked. So this connector is a single row of many pins and the wires that are used are on this side so it's these wires which i've uh, wrapped together in order to get the correct details i've done a write-up on a forum post on tinker difference so we can check that out here so it's basically the same method as my se30 i've shoved male dupont ends to this connector and the wires go all the way across with extensions outside of the case through the locking hole. And here's my Macintosh Classic 1 opened up. And keep in mind, this is the first machine that I modded for the RGB2 HDMI. I was trying to follow Adrian's Digital Basement video on doing the same. There's one decision that I would revisit um, with given my experience now. So the four wires are actually soldered all the way on the analog board in the corner uh, near the speaker and it's a really cramped space. I'm going to show you a photo of how I did it. It's in my thread again in Tinker different forum and I should have, well with my experience, I should have just done the shoving method right there on this connector which links the analog board and the logic board. And it's the kind that has uh, two rows of, of pins here, just like the SC30. Uh, I'm not sure exactly 100% if it's the same cables in the same spots, but it's uh, the information is out there in the schematics of the logic board of the Mac Classic. So because of my decision, the cables, the DuPont cables that have to go outside the case, reach all the way from back there in the corner, all the way out the case and it's a mess i haven't used my rgb2 hmi on my mac classic it was again my first machine that i modded uh it was a kind of a practice machine because i care less about the classic one than i do my other macs time for some closing thoughts is it easy to install the rgb2 hmi absolutely can you buy an already assembled version somewhere Yes, you can from Tech Select in the USA. Sells an um, already assembled board with the Pi Zero for over a hundred dollars. Can you assemble your own cheaper? And the answer is yes. Again, you can go to the GitHub project, get the Gerber files, and have the PCB made from your favorite manufacturer. One thing to keep in mind is that the video signal must not go the wrong way. So you absolutely need some kind of device that prevents a return current. So this task is accomplished by the TTL extender board that sits between the 
Pi Zero and the RGB to HDMI hat. Also keep in mind that if you go the DIY route, uh, there are some SMD components, surface mount devices that you need to solder. So depending on your comfort with soldering, on your experience, that might not be an option for you or it might be a great practice. It could serve as a great starter project for SMD soldering. If your preference is not to shove cables inside my connectors like I did in my video, uh, there is a ready-made solution from a member of the community from the Mac Vintage folks called Ron McAdams who has designed some breakout boards uh, which promises to secure your cables a lot more strongly. So his breakout boards are available for purchase from his friend's store at jcm-1.com which is Joe's Computer Museum store. So you can check this out. As you can see in the picture, this is what you would get, which would greatly facilitate the connection of your RGB to HDMI. So that's it for me today. So I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching. Bye.